everybody. I'm Brian Julius, Chief Content Officer with Enterprise DNA. And today what I want to do is I want to talk to you about creating your perfect Power BI template file. And the benefit that this is going to have is it's going to save you potentially 20 to 30 minutes every time you start up a Power BI report. And just as importantly, it's going to make Power BI work exactly the way you want it to. That It's going to be configured each time perfect to your preferences and settings. So let's jump in and get working on creating our, our perfect template. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a color theme. And what I've got is I've got a custom enterprise DNA color theme. So if I go view, browse for themes, and then go to my desktop. In here somewhere, I've got an enterprise DNA.json file. There we go. And let's click on that. And open that file. And the theme is successfully imported. So there we go. We've got theme file. Now the next thing I want to do is I always like to put my measures in a measures table. And so let's create a key measures table. And we'll just pop the field pane open. And there we go. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to create a dates table. And I, I always recommend using uh, Melissa DeCorte's extended date table. Um, but I've got, a, I've got a particular version of it that I like that uses a day offset in addition to all the fields that she incorporates. So if we go here into external tools and then we go into the analyst hub, I've actually published this version of the extended day table to the analyst hub. So if we go on community, and we look right here. This is the Edna extended date table with the day offsets. And let's copy that code. Back to Power BI. And we'll go into Power Query. New source blank query. The editor, and we'll paste that that code in. And we've got no syntax error, so we're in good shape. Click done. And in in this case, we're not going to know exactly what our start and end date is for every report that we're going to be doing. But what I typically do is I typically create a three-year table. So starting with the previous year. So January 1st, 2021, and let's end with the, the end of the future year, so 12, 31, 2023, fiscal year start in July, and let's invoke that. And we can always change that really easily and quickly just by and change this to a dates table. We can always just change the parameters up here really quickly and extend that or shorten it as we need to. Um, so what I want to do in addition to this is um, even though Power BI has added a network days function, I really like the network days function that MP Feldman developed um, that incorporates directly into Power BI as an offset. So if we go back to, to Analyst Hub and we go to the community repository again, I've got that code in as well. We can copy that code back to Power Query. And let's create another, another blank query here. So new query, blank query. 
and to the advanced editor. And let's copy MP's function in here. And now what we want to do is, actually, let's rename this to effects network is go to our dates table add column invoke custom function and let's invoke that network days and it let's create a column called network day offset And hit OK. And there we go. So we're good to go on, on network day offset. OK, so we're, we're making good progress here. Um, what I'd also like to do is just set this up as a new group. And let's call this data model and move the dates table into our data model. So I think that, that does it for Power Query. So we should be loading our, our dates table in here. And so just take a minute to spin. Okay, there we go. Now, the one thing we always want to remember to do is to mark our dates table as a date table. So if we go here, mark as date table. And this is, this is necessary in order to get your time intelligence functions working properly. And we'll select our date field. And now we've got our date table marked properly. So let's now go to options. And there are a number of options that I always turn off. So if you've heard me talk about this before, I really detest the auto detect new relationships. That just creates a ton of problems with the model. I turn this off as well. And then in the, in the report settings, I really like changing the default interaction from cross highlighting to cross filtering. And I really like the look of the modern visual tooltip. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to use some of the custom enterprise DNA external tools to further modify our dates table. And let me show you what we want to do here. So if we go into external tools, the first one we want to go to is PowerSort Pro. And what this does is this automatically, if you look up here, it enable enterprise DNA date table matching. Um, what it does is if we find by sort column and then set by sort column, it automatically goes through that dates table and sets each column to its proper sort column. So we no longer have to do any, any manual setting of that, that we need three clicks and we're done on that. So that's, that's the first thing we want to do. And the second thing we want to do is let's go into Meta Mechanic Pro. And let's, let's set some defaults on our metadata. So what I like to do here is make all my dates short date format. And then I like to turn off all the aggregations on my numeric fields. I feel like that, that auto sum just creates a lot of problems. And so I like to turn that off across the board and then put all of my measures in that key measures table. So if we set those, we just hit get metadata, set metadata, boom, all that's done. And we can close that down. And if we look at our dates table, it sometimes takes a little bit of time for that to update. But if we go here, we'll now see all those, all those annoying aggregations are turned off and our dates are all in proper format. So we're almost done here. One of the last things I want to do is I want, to, I want to address the visualization pane. So, for example, I think pie charts are trash. I don't want them on my visualization pane. So let's unpin that visual. 
and let's put something useful on there. Um, actually, I don't, I don't usually find much use for the Azure map either. And I think James Dale's icon map is a much better map visual. So let's take that one off and let's replace that with Azure, with the uh, icon map. So let's get more visuals. Let's go into App Source and we'll search for icon. Here we go. And we'll just add that in now as a as a default visual. And let's pin that. Pin that to the visualizations pane. And that means now every time we we open the file to start off Power BI, it's going to start off with that visual pinned in the in the pane. So there are some other ones that I like to include. I like to include Deneb, HTML, CSS, and um, Zebra BI visuals in my defaults, but I'm not going to take the time to do that now. You can configure that pane however you want to do so. I just want to show you that as, as an option. So just a couple more things I want to cover in putting this template together. Um, so the next thing I wanted to do was just to put a, um, a blank button in. And we can do this in order to put um, logos onto our onto our template. So let's let's take this button and move it over here. And in properties under style, let's um let's look at icon type and custom icon. And then it'll give us the option to pull in a, a file. Let's pull a logo file in like that. And then what we can do is we can take and apply an action to that. Um, so if we turn on action and let's assign that to a web URL and we'll paste in our our enterprise DNA address and then for tooltip um, let's just put text in here which is um, click to go to main enterprise DNA site and we can we can add whole series of buttons you know we you could potentially add one with um, a mail to button or a button with your LinkedIn profile or other social media but um, this is just an example of, of how you can you can do this and so the last thing I, I would want to do with this is let's let's save this file and you just find the directory for it and let's call this, um, I'll call this um, Brian Startup Template. And we're going to save that to, instead of a PBIX, we're going to save that to a PBIT file. And we'll hit save. And just as basic end of theme starter report, and that's 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 a good description. And let's go and find that and just copy the path because we're going to need that to put that on the toolbar. And here we go, and we'll just copy this path. Copy this path. Okay. And now what we can do is we can either create a JSON file from scratch, um, or if you are an enterprise DNA subscriber, what we can do is we can use Conductor Pro. And I've created an entry here for starter template, and we just have to hit edit. And this basically just creates the template for the 
the JSON file. And so I've got a starter template, a description, um, the path to Power BI, and then what we need here is just in the argument, just to paste that path in that we um, that we created just a minute ago. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is we need to create an icon. So the way that that works is um, via base64. And so what we can do is we can go to um, our base64. I, I happen to like um, right here, base image encoder. And this, this actually has a nice feature in terms of this image optimization and creating smaller files. So let's find an image that we think will, will work for this, this particular template. And I think, I think I've got one here that'll work quite well. Um, so let's take that and drop that into the base64 conversion site. And that'll convert, and then we just hit copy, and back to Conductor Pro, and we just paste that in right here. And you just have to strip the, there's a data element right at the top that you just have to strip off um, right here. It'll just, we just want to start with image. and hit save and successfully edited the tool. And now what we want to do is close that and back to our Power BI template. And then what we want to do is just save this back to our template file. Brian startup template and hit replace and now we want to shut down Power BI to let the changes take effect save your changes uh, no we've already done that if we reopen Power BI and then go to external tools what we should see is our starter template with the icon click on that and that should fire up all of our settings you can see it's creating the dates table the measures table it's put icon map in it's put our logo in our theme and we are all set up and ready to go so basically now every time we we create a new power bi file um, we just click on that that startup template and we save ourselves 20 or 30 minutes and we have it working exactly as we as we wanted to so um, I hope you found that helpful. I hope that that's uh, something you can take from and kind of craft exactly as you want the program to work for you. Um, let me know in the comments uh, how that works for you. And um, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.